Conference USA football on ESPN and a beautiful day in Denton, Texas as the University of North Texas with a two and three record, one and two in Conference USA play. Take on the Rice Owls, one and one, both games coming within the conference. Alongside Ladera McLean, my name is Doug Anderson and we welcome you to Apogee Stadium this afternoon where it has been a month of Saturdays since the North Texas football team took to the field. These guys have not played since October 17th. They are ready to go today. Yeah, I think we're going to get a spirited effort here today. And the Rice Owls, hey, they haven't played in a long time either. Should be a spirited competition between the two. Rice being led by their quarterback, Mike Collins, a grad transfer from TCU. Eight touchdowns, only one interception on the year. Well, part of playing quarterback is having the mental capacity of knowing where to go with the ball pre-snap. And he's mastered that through the first two games of this season. He's using the talent around him, some receivers that can go get the football, but he's got the physical measurables too. He's big, he's strong, his arm is accurate, and he's been able to make the right plays. Reason why this offense is top three scoring in Conference USA and top three in total offense. And of course, it doesn't hurt that he has a senior playmaker at receiver in Austin Trammell. Five touchdown catches on the year for Trammell through only two games. As for North Texas, their defense has struggled this year, but their offense certainly has not, including their last outing against Middle Tennessee, where they set a program record with 768 yards of offense. Well, this offense is number one in scoring offense in Conference USA. It's first in total offense in Conference USA and top three in the nation in total offense. This offense is an absolute juggernaut, and Jason Bean has been able to take this offense and take it to another level, not only passing the ball, but being effective running, that added dimension that defenses have to game plan for, this offense has been red hot all season long. Jason Beam was a track star in high school, and he puts that speed on display when he gets out into the open field. We'll see that some today as Mr. Bean and the Mean Green take on the Rice Owls and Mike Collins coming your way next right here on ESPN. Greetings indeed from the University of North Texas and Apogee Stadium in Denton, Texas. We are ready to go with this one, Rice and UNT. And before we do, let's take a look at two of the star receivers we will see today, including Jalen Darden, who leads the nation in touchdown receptions with 10, despite only playing in five games so far this year. Yeah, he's been incredible. He's been explosive in this offense, but hey, make no mistake about it, Austin Trammell is a very good receiver, too. Second in conference, USA behind Darden in reception yards per game at 109.5. Ethan Mooney will kick the ball away for North Texas, and we are underway. Mooney's kick sailing through the end zone, so the Rice Owls will have the ball to start the game on their own 25-yard line. Led by their quarterback, who we talked about in the pregame, Mike Collins, the grad transfer from TCU. Came to TCU from his home of New Canaan, Connecticut. So an East Coast young man who's playing in the Lone Star State for two different, very highly respected universities, yeah. TCU and Rice. Well, he's been efficient. And he's uh, first in the Conference USA in pass efficiency. Now, that's only through two games. But at the same time, in the two games, he's put up a great body of work at 57% completion percentage. His first pass is complete. Good for a gain of about four as he is able to find a man on the near side of the field. That's Kalen Griffin. I see a lot of Griffin coming out of the backfield today. Could see him a lot today, depending on the status of Juma Tobiano, their starting running back, who was banged up a bit in practice this week. He was a Game time decision questionable as to whether or not he was going to see a lot of activity today. Handoff goes to Griffin and Griffin will pick up the first down and more as he scoots across the 35 up to the 42 yard line. That's a pickup of 13 yards. 
Well, this defense is at the bottom of Conference USA and rushing yards allowed at 243, two, 243 yards per game. And you look at this offensive line up front, they're led by Isaac Klarkowski, number big, number 54 in the middle of this offense, a red shirt freshman. And right off the bat, they're kind of leaning on this defensive front, Gaston there for a big yardage. It's Griffin again, across the 45, up to the 47 yard line, pick up a five on first down. In there to make the tackle, KD Davis, the middle linebacker for UNT. 34 tackles on the year for the junior out of Ennis. Well, they're gonna need a lot of activity, activity from him today. And especially when this offense of the Rice Owls likes to run the ball, they run 65% of the time, Doug. So their game plan is to run the ball and then set up the play action pass and try to attack vertically. Here's Collins going to the air. He finds Trammell and Trammell pushed out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Big game for Trammell, 23 yards on the reception. And that's the senior receiver that will be a dangerous player today against North Texas. Uh, he's got a man-to-man -man route on the outside. That's going to be a tough cover for anybody that's playing cornerback today. And John Davis is going to have his work cut out for, and especially if they can rely anytime they want to to run the ball. The play-action pass could be proven to be lethal here this afternoon. First down for the Owls. And off Griffin, going nowhere this time as he was tripped up by Dion Neville, the nose tackle out of Abilene, Texas. And that's a definitely bright spot there for this defense. If they could get Neville, get his activity up front, if he could just be, even at this moment in time, just a stump in the road in this offense and for the defensive front. And the rest of these guys in behind him can have a chance as well. Offset eye in the backfield, handoff goes to Griffin. He is met in the backfield again by Noville. Dropped for a loss by the senior out of Abilene. Played for Hugh Sandifer at Wiley High School out in the big country. Well, he just wins the battle up front and I bragged on Klarkowski a little bit earlier, but Noville absolutely wins that matchup up front and wreaks havoc in the back and he almost comes up with the fumble. Yeah, the ball popped loose at the end of the play. Rice with the recovery, now facing third and 13. Collins dropping back, Noville giving chase. Collins able to throw it, but incomplete. And it was almost picked off as well as Cam Johnson had a chance at it. And that will bring up fourth down and we will see the field goal unit make their way onto the field for Rice. Well, this is a great job here by the defense. Good coverage on the back end. And this is just great effort by Cam Johnson. He did make that play. As you can see, Austin Trammell's open in the flat. And that's what this defense needed to do. They needed to have a good opening series to where they forced a field goal attempt and potentially get off the field here without too much damage. Colin Richard Telly on for a 45 yard attempt. That would tie his season long. Kick is on the way, sailing toward the uprights, and it is good. So Richard Telly, the grad transfer for the Rice Owls, puts the feisty Nightbirds on the board first as Rice leads North Texas 3-0. When COVID-19 disrupted everything, we did what we do best. When we could no longer be together, we still found ways to stay close. When the number one goal is to help students achieve their dreams, we overcome any obstacle, bringing education and opportunity for 130 years with a resilient, caring, and creative spirit. The University of North Texas, where education never stops. Hi folks, Chris Fowler here, Dos Equis new poor by poor commentator. Hey, a job's a job. Now onto the poor, look at it run. The ice cold refreshing cerveza rushes toward the 10 full announce line. There's no stopping this crisp and delicious cerveza now. It's at the 11, 11.5, 11 11.6. 11 Will it reach 12? There it is, 12 fluid ounces, unbelievable. I'm crying, I'm actually crying right now. 
Dos Equis, a most interesting beer. this increasingly crazy world that's out of control. What do you do in this? I tell you, you don't shy away from the challenges of your life and the world today. You have to evolve with the future. The answer is to live deeply and look up. At Rice University, our students and faculty look up. They look up with community, values, resilience, and dreams. Back at Apogee Stadium, Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean, North Texas and Rice this afternoon. And you look at just the struggle that these two teams have had to just be on the football field, LD, the postponements, the cancellations, uh, racking up for both North Texas and Rice. You know, I think about that and being a former student athlete, how do you get ready for something like that? You just never know. It's a week to week proposition. At least North Texas has two of the three games going to be rescheduled. Rice still has dates to be determined. So it's just so uncertain, and it, and it takes a lot to get ready during the course of the week. In normal times, now you've got the added element of this as well. Rice's opening drive win, eight plays, 48 yards, culminating in a 45-yard field goal by Colin Ricciatelli. Kickoff sails to the 10-yard line, taken there by DeAndre Torrey up to the 25. So North Texas will start at the standard field position, 25-yard line, led by their quarterback, Jason Bean. Jason Bean in a battle with Austin Awning at the beginning of the season, started the opening game that we broadcast uh, with HBU, Houston Baptist, and looked very good. Oni got some time in that game. Oni got looks in the next couple of games, and then the offense started to sputter a bit, in that Middle Tennessee game, he threw two interceptions. In comes Jason Bean, and it was like a gun went like off. A switch went off, right? <laughs> yeah. With this North Texas offense, they just exploded. 768 yards, a school record. Jason Bean keeping on first down, and will pick up six yards, second down and four coming up. Bean looks, now will take off again. This time runs into traffic at the 32-yard line, only a gain of one. This offense coming into the game averaging almost 40 points a game and 593 yards a contest, both of those categories leading Conference USA. Bean, throw to the flat, Torrey. And DeAndre Torrey will pick up the first down across the 35 out to the 38-yard line. A pick up six for DeAndre Torrey. Well, to beat one of the top offenses in the country, that play there on third down kind of shows you in a microcosm of just how difficult these guys are to cover. Now Torrey the handoff bounces off one hit down at the 43-yard line. Five-yard gain for Torrey. Bring up second down. And what really helps this offense take off is the offensive line cohesiveness up front to really control the line of scrimmage to be able to run and pass the ball. Another run by Torrey up to the 45, gain of a couple. There's Blaze Aldridge, the outside linebacker who leads this team in tackles with 21. He also has a sack on the season as well, and there he Breaks into the backfield and takes down DeAndre Torrey for no gain. Yeah, he's just a throwback kind of player, very instinctive. And even on this play here, he reads what that offensive line is doing. He reads his keys and shoots that gap and makes the play in the backfield. And if he doesn't make that play, there's no doubt that Mean Green pick up the first down. Rice's last 11 opponents scoreless on their first possession. That's about to be 12 yep. as the Mean Green. 
are set to punt the ball away. Hey, this defense can play football. And, and that's one of the things that's going to help them really in all the games that they're able to play the rest of the season is that they've been able to get off the field and especially to start games off. They've been very good. Bernardo Rodriguez gives this punt a terrific roll. It goes inside the five yard line down at the three. 53 yard punt for Bernardo Rodriguez and if there's a bright spot coming out of the first drive for North Texas, they pin the Rice Owls deep, deep in their own territory. And they're gonna need a big field to defend. We know the deficiencies in this defense. They, they struggled, obviously, one of the bottom of the conference in run defense, bottom of the conference in pass defense, and certainly in total defense. They need to be able to defend a long stretch of football field here. This is a good start. Rice scored on their opening possession with a 45-yard field goal by Colin Ricciatelli. But now backed up in the shadow of their own end zone. Hand off to Griffin. And Griffin up to the 10-yard line, giving the Owls a little bit of breathing room there. Seven-yard run. Griffin, a true freshman, LD, out of Tyler Chapel Hill. So coming out of East Texas to the Rice Owls program and already making a big impact. Well, he's a physical straight line downhill type runner. And this offense is all about attitude. And they set the tone with their front guys up front. And if they can control this line of scrimmage, the mean green are gonna have to make some adjustments quick because they're getting gashed for the rest of this game. Pass out to the far sideline and taken up the far sideline by Jake Bailey, who finally is pushed out of bounds at the 45 yard line. A 35 yard catch and run for Jake Bailey. Uh, he gets a great inside block from Austin Trammell, but it wasn't great, but it was effective enough. And that allowed Bailey to go down the sideline. And again, that just shows you some of the inexperience and some of the concerns in the defensive backfield of the being green. Guys out of position, not ready to make a play, and you saw the effect of that as the Rice Owls go up the field here. It was Cam Johnson that pushed him out of bounds. Collins hit as he delivers, but the pass complete on the near sideline, good for a first down to Austin Trammell. That's a big time throw. When you look back at this replay, Mike Collins, he's standing tall in the pocket. Now he's 6'5", two and a quarter pounds, but he's got to take this shot, but watch him stick with it. He gets hit, and that ball is out, and it's on time, and that's how you play quarterback at any level, and he's doing a great job of it here early. Six forty left in the first quarter. Rice with their second possession. Trying to add to a three nothing lead. Hand off Griffin, and Griffin Picks up about five before he is spun down by Kevin Wood. Second down and five for the Owls. Who lost in double overtime to start their season against Middle Tennessee, 40 to 34, but then beat Southern Miss in their last game. That was on Halloween night, 30 to six, a victory over Southern Miss. Collins will keep it. Finds a little bit of running room enough to pick up the first down at the 30 yard line. So a seven yard gain for Mike Collins. He's not known as a running quarterback, but able to get the job done there. It's a nice call here. Offensive coordinator Jerry Mack trying to change it up, give this defense something else to think about. And Doug, you're an absolutely right. Not known to be a running threat, but he's effective when they do call it because the defense is not anticipating that. But he's got enough athletic ability to gash and pick up the yardage needed, and he did it there. High formation in the backfield. Collins under center, and will hand it off. Breaking tackles across the 20, down to the 15-yard line. That carry goes to Ari Broussard. Broussard, an interesting story, LD, walked on. He was enrolled at Rice. Nobody knew he was actually a football player. He showed up one day and said he wanted to play, and next thing you know, here he is in the lineup. 
Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job here. That's some tough running. And this is an old school ISO play. They lined up in the I formation and Jerry Johnson, uh, the, the third, the fullback, he's lead blocking. And yeah, you're right. What a talent that they find there is the wall, former walk on making an impact here on this next the second drive here. Broussard will stay in the backfield. Collins with time throwing to the end zone. It's caught and it is a touchdown. Austin Trammell with his sixth touchdown of the season and it gives the Owls a nine nothing lead. I don't think you can throw this pass any better. Look at Collins, he knew right away he had man coverage and why not go to one of the best receivers in Conference USA in Austin Trammell and a heck of a grab to pull it in and get a foot to drag in for the touchdown. Big Quinn Whitlock on the play. Now Rich Telly on for the extra point. It's good, and that gives the Rice Owls a 10-0 advantage. Rice has scored on both of their possessions. North Texas gets it for the second time when we return to Apogee Stadium in a moment on ESPN. Rice has taken a 10-0 lead, and you talk about strength versus strength today. Rice against the run in the top 20 in the country, allowing only 3.3 a carry, but North Texas has the number one rushing offense in the conference and ran for 462 in their last outing against Middle Tennessee. Pretty solid, but they're struggling here in this first quarter. Only 14 yards rushing <laughs> to start the game off, and a lot of football left to be played. I want to go back to that previous drive and realize that Rice just went 97 yards. We didn't in, even highlight that. In yeah. seven plays, and uh, they mixed it up well. They had a couple of nice runs from Griffin, a long pass to Bailey, then the touchdown pass to Trammell. They really look diversified and, uh, I mean, dare I say, very good right now they, offensively. They look very good. They look very in command, and right now, does North Texas have an answer to that? Their offense is going to get first shot here to try to get them back on the board at least. DeAndre Torrey will try to set them up with a return, but runs into a little bit of traffic. And down he goes at the 23-yard line. One of the strengths of North Texas, you talk about that run strength, and one of the reasons why they've been so good with the run is that they have so much depth at running back. You've got DeAndre Torrey, but then you've got Trey Siggers, Nick Smith, and coming back today after an injury, we expect to see Oscar Attaway. He had a huge first couple of games for North Texas before he suffered his injury. Well, he certainly looked like the future, right? And before he got hurt, he looked like to be the heir apparent. But I think these guys up front, they'll settle in, and then I'll think you'll see the true form in the Mean Green offense here on this drive. And speaking of Attaway, his first carry of the night goes for a couple of yards. Attaway, a freshman out of North Little Rock, Arkansas, played the first two games of the season against HBU and SMU, and he had over 100 yards in each of those games. Got an injured Rice Owl on the field. So there's a timeout at the moment as the training staff pays attention to him over on the far sideline. But Attaway really adds a dimension to this offense if they can keep him healthy and use him in a rotation with DeAndre Torrey. We'll take a timeout with the injured player on the field and be back in a moment to Apogee Stadium. The injured right Sal was defensive back Treshawn Devonez. He walked off under his own power and now it's back to the action on second down and eight for the Mean Green. Jason Bean rolls away from the pressure, throws incomplete, intended for Darden in front of the North Texas bench. That will bring up third down and eight. Well, Doug, this is a nice job here by the Owls secondary to really take away the inside threat. They wanted to go deep across the middle to Greg White, number 14. But the safety stayed at home. The man coverage underneath was outstanding. 
and the pressure got to Jason Bean, and he had to kind of throw that one away. Bean on the slant across the middle looking for Jason Pirtle. Incomplete, it was knocked down by Pretty Calderon, the safety. And that'll bring up fourth down, and once again, North Texas will send the punting unit on. Well, they're bringing the blitz, and so if you got blitz four times tonight, you're gonna have man coverage, and Calderon does a fantastic job of getting a hand in between the receiver and the ball. And they get off the field once again, Doug, and you know, like you said before, that offense of the Rice Owls looked pretty much unstoppable. This has got to be go time for this Mean Green defense here. Rodriguez, another good roll off the kick as this time it is fielded by Trammell, and Trammell will take it up the near sideline. Out of bounds around the 47. Terrific return for Allen Trammell. They'll officially spot him out at around the 46. That sets up the Owls with great field position already leading 10 to nothing. Yeah, this is the unhidden un thing that most punt returners don't do. It's the hidden yardage to protect yourself. Don't let that ball bounce, pick it up and run. And, out, and Austin Trammell does a fantastic job. Almost get the ball near midfield. And where this offense and the defense of the main green, they've got to figure out a way to slow this offense down. Defense has not been the strong suit for the main green so far this year, giving up 44 points a game and almost 550 yards per contest. Collins in trouble, ball loose. An offensive lineman jumps on it for the Rice Owls, but that was a terrific rush to the passer and a hit by Gabriel Murphy, the defensive end, a red shirt freshman out of Dallas. Well, he's undersized, but he's got outstanding quickness and he goes right around Javon Wolford, the right tackle, number 70, and he packs it, counts on the football. They're showing you a little bit of quickness for the red shirt freshman, 6'2", 235. Loss of 11, Rice facing second and 21. And Griffin, once again, tripped up in the backfield by Dion Noville. So there's your bright spot on the defense right there, Noville. He, he's almost unblockable here this first quarter. He's made so many plays here, three to be exact, behind the line of scrimmage, and he's just winning the point of contact. And if this defense can continue to do that, good things will happen for the Mean Green on defense. North Texas players trying to get the fans that are here this afternoon up on their feet, third and 24. Yeah, it's going to see if the Mean Green going to play coverage or they're going to bring some heat. May try to get off the field here. Collins looked like a little bit of a mix up in communication and he goes down with a loss as North Texas, this time it's Grayson Murphy, the twin brother of Gabriel Murphy who broke into the backfield to make the play. Yeah, you see here a little bobbled snap. They wanted to come with the read option and how about the main green defense stepping up? And it's, you don't always have to be a great defense. You just need to play timely defense. It's complimentary football. Your offense has got to help you out and certainly keep the ball away from the other team offense. But sometimes in the defense, step up and make a play. And the main green did it there. There was a rush wow. to the punter. There is a penalty flag. And this is either going to be roughing or running into the kicker as the punt sailed down to about the 21 yard line. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Defense, number 26, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow, that is a... That's an absolute killer. Absolute. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's the worst variety because now you hit the kicker on that exposed leg to where it's really most dangerous. That was Alex Morris, the safety. In it looked like he knew it as soon as he did it. He yeah. was like, oh, no, what did I just do? Yeah. Uh, and, and his special teams coach down on the sideline definitely let him know that was not a smart play. And, and those are the little things in the course of a game that will get you beat. <laughs> you know, a lot of game left, but you're trying to just find some kind of identity on defense. You're trying to get some confidence. And then everything that you've just done gets thrown away there on a Bad special teams play. Adam, fourth and 28, and now a fresh set of downs for Rice. 
up at the 43 yard line. Griffin with the carry to the 49, he picks up six. Kyle Sanders makes the stop, one of the leading tacklers for the Mean Green. One of 12 seniors that was honored before the game as well as the seniors were represented and uh, acknowledged by head coach Seth Luttrell before the game. Good group that includes Sanders, DeAndre Torrey, Jalen Darden. This time the run stuffed for a loss of one. Well, they better figure out a way to block 97 in the black jersey. He didn't make the tackle, but he caused enough of combustion at the line of scrimmage that Caleb, Caleb Colvin, number 93, running off the screen here, was able to come in and make the play. Speaking of seniors, both Noville and Colvin seniors as well. Third down and four. Now keep your eye on Austin Trammell. That's the end of the first quarter. Before the snap, it's the end of the first quarter. So after 15 minutes of play at Apogee Stadium in Denton, the University of North Texas trailing the Rice Owls 10-0 on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for football in Denton, Texas. As the statue of Mean Joe Green looks on from Apogee Stadium here at the University of North Texas, the Rice Owls begin the second quarter with a pass complete for a first down to Jordan Myers. Joe Green, of course, on the wall of honor along with the Ray Renfro there. and Four-time Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of the greatest football players to ever come from the University of North Texas. And what's been great over the last several years is to see him around. His presence has really been a big uh, factor here at North Texas recently. He's been a big part of the program. And boy, fans just love having him here and seeing him around the stadium on game days. Carried by Kayla Griffin. Good for a first down as Rice goes inside the 30 yard line. The 35 down to the 34. Uh, Caleb Griffin is a physical, <laughs> I mean, he is running with a lot of mean intentions. And it's really tough so far early for the Mean Greens defense to really get a handle on him because he is breaking tackle after tackle and a run that should be about one or two yards is breaking off to be an eight or nine, almost 10 yard game. It's back to Griffin. And Griffin fights his way across the 30 to the 28 yard line. Six yards on that run for Griffin, the freshman out of Tyler. And it only makes sense for an offense like Rice with their head coach, Mike Bloomgren, to be physical. You know, he's, yeah, he's from Florida State. You know, they had those great offensive, you know, my offensive lines behind Bobby Bowden. And now he's preached that. He coaches the offensive line where he's been before. And this offensive line doing an outstanding job of controlling the front now. Noville has had his moments here in this game, but make no mistake about it, this offense certainly doing what they want to do in the run game. Pitch back to Griffin. This time Griffin hit after only a gain of a yard. Nice job by the Mean Green defense that time. Larry Nixon was part of that along with Dion Noville. You mentioned Bloomgren's physical mentality a concept that he came up with when he was an assistant at Stanford was that of intellectual yep. brutality. And what that means is you play smart, but you play tough. And his Rice teams are starting to show that. And it's a brand. It's a brand that these guys believe in when they come into, obviously, Rice University. And I think they're showing a little bit of that here early today. It's a physical type of game. They like to, ooh, I think the ball comes Yeah, ball here. pop loose from Kalen Griffin. It looks like the Mean Green might have it. Well, you're talking about a timely turnover, a defense that has struggled to take the ball away in the games this season. They need this to try to go their way here, and it does. The turnover goes to North Texas. Coming up from the bottom of the pile for UNT, Mikhail Sanders. You take a look, Sanders put the hit on Griffin and then the ball comes loose. He's there to grab it and 
Wrestle it away from the rest of the pile. A big break for North Texas. That's a huge break. Head coach Seth Luttrell and the Mean Green. Picking up a turnover, giving them the ball. Here in the second quarter, trailing 10-0. Fifth season as the head coach of the Mean Green. 29 and 28 record. He was a former offensive coordinator at North Carolina, as well as Indiana and Arizona. He's taken this Mean Green squad to three bowl games in four seasons, including back-to-back -back nine win seasons in 17 and 18. Well, not only has he done a phenomenal job for this team overall in terms of wins, but when he took over prior to the 2016 season, this offense averaged 15 points a game, which is unheard of, and then they just spiked that up, and now they're one of the top scoring teams in Conference USA. Bean airing it out down that far sideline, incomplete. He was trying to make the connection with Austin Ogden making, but couldn't quite reel it in downfield, and that will bring up a long third down for North Texas. Well, you just sometimes got to take your shot. The defense called for it. They knew we were going to get man coverage on the outside. That safety couldn't get across. Almost connected. You got to come back to. We got to. Looks like we got here. movement on the line. This could be Elijah Garcia. Offense. Offense number 18, five yard penalty. Nope. Still it is down. a. Ball start against North Texas. Ogan make it with the penalty. And that should never happen. <laughs> Receiver, you're, you're so far away from the ball, you, you don't even listen to the quarterback's cadence. You just look at the movement of that ball go, and that's your trigger to get started either in your route or your blocking assignment. So third and 13 for North Texas. Bean has plenty of time, throws it, and is it caught? No, incomplete. Wide open in the middle of the field was Austin Ogan making, but the pass was a little bit behind him, wasn't able to catch it. And this is where Jason Bean wish he had this one back because he actually has pretty good pass protection. If he slides just a, a touch to his right and takes his time and sets his feet, there's no uh, doubt about it. He makes that throw, and that's an easy completion there for a first down, but instead, Bean Green got to punt the ball away again. Rodriguez, line drive kick. This time it's not going to roll quite as far as it has on previous efforts, but still a decent punt inside the 40 yard line. And that's where Rice will take over on their own 39 as they lead 10 0. The Sal's unit closed out the year strong last season with three wins, including a victory over North Texas. Uh, they came just about uh, a year ago, and uh, they they really started to pick up some momentum toward the end of the season last year. Obviously, COVID issues and everything that's happened in 2020 has kind of thrown their season into a kind of a limbo where they're only playing two games so far. It's insane <laughs> to even think about it. This is week 12, supposed to be, <laughs> and they've only played two games. Now their third game here. And uh, we still got a whole second quarter to go here. It's just unfathomable just to even think of that right now. And his team looks sharp today. I but think they, they do. Look good. I, was, I was just about to say they look sharp. They look like they're tuned up and ready to go. And North Texas looking like a team right now that has had a 35 day layoff. Exactly. And, I think you're exactly right on that. So they need to kind of get their spark going here. We'll see if that can happen. Mike Collins, so far today, six of seven for 102 yards and a touchdown. He's performed very well. Handoff. And across the 40, up to the 43 yard line with the carry, Kalen Griffin. Number six, Kalen Griffin. Kalen Griffin on the carry to the 43 yard line. Not a whole lot of size on that front of the Mean Green defense. The old front, they, the average. 262 pounds per man. Now, a lot of that heft is Deion Noville. He's 315 in the middle, but Gabriel Murphy, we mentioned, is only he's less than 240 pounds, and Grayson Murphy is less than 235 pounds as well. So, not a lot of heft up front. 
Collins pump fake now goes downfield. Trammell and Trammell reels in the dime at the 19 yard line. First down for the Rice Owls, a tremendous pass by Collins. And that's his second best pass of the day. I still think the pass in the first quarter where he got hit and he threw a dime to Austin Trammell, but this is awfully good too. He throws it in the only place that his receiver can make the catch and the defense actually wasn't bad. The defensive back didn't locate the ball, but you have gotta know where Austin Trammell is. He's so crafty and this quarterback here is red hot and his accuracy is off the charts here early. A 38 yard gain for the Owls. First down inside Mean Green territory and handoff goes to Bailey. Bailey is tripped up. No gain there as he is tackled down by the Mean Green. That's a good play. Watch Kevin Wood here. He recognizes the jet sweep and he gets outside contained. So now the runner can only do one thing and go back to the inside. You know, this Mean Green defense is really close. They're in position, but sometimes their technique breaks down at the point of contact. And that's why you're starting to see some big gains from time to time. But you could also see glimpses of them being very good. And that was a good example there by Kevin Wood. Collins throws it near sideline. Not much there as the reception goes to Chris Boudreau but only a couple of yards on the game. Well, I've always been a fan of Jerry Mack, the offensive coordinator, because he keeps things simple. He basically gets in formations and your defense declares itself early. And a lot of times these cornerbacks are given six, seven yard cushions, cushions and you throw the hitch route to the wide side of the field. It's a high percentage gain. And now they're in third and manageable with this offense has been pretty good. It was actually Andrew Mason that made the catch. Collins with the run and a couple of yards for him. Tackle down at the 11 yard line. Heck of a play there by Gabriel Murphy. Yeah, Gabe Murphy and Grayson Murphy, twins. Book in defensive ends for North Texas, redshirt freshman. Yeah, watch him slide in inside. That's a great job because there were two blockers on him potentially but he recognizes the play and slid underneath. That's that quickness, that's that ability to get around these bigger body offensive linemen to make the play. The Murphy Twins played at Bishop Lynch High School, a private school in Dallas. Mascot is the Friars. Timeout time out on the field, first. It will be called by seconds. Rice, with 8.20 remaining in the first half. The Owls facing a fourth and two, and we will have that play coming up when we return to Apogee Stadium here on ESPN. Big fourth down for the Rice Owls, fourth and two, with the ball on the main green 11 yard line. Collins. Out of the shotgun. Ari Broussard is in the backfield. Collins with time, throws to the end zone, incomplete. He wanted Trammell, but was unable to make the connection. And a great job by Cam Johnson of being there in coverage. Yeah, this is a tough cover, but Cam Johnson steps up and does a fantastic job. Just making it difficult there to complete the pass. And that's all you want to do as a defense is find a way to make the play at the right time and harass these receivers enough to where you can get off the field. He was actually trying to find Jake Bailey, but Bailey was covered up well by Cam Johnson and had some mean green turnover on downs. Defense holds deep in their own territory. Hand off Attaway. And Oscar Attaway with a 10 yard run and a first down for the Mean Green. That's a good job there. They had a formation that eliminated the defenders outside of the box. So they immediately had numbers to run the inside zone. North Texas wants to speed things up back to Attaway. And he'll pick up another six. And you can see what they're wanting to do, Doug. Now they get these receivers so far out. Look at the receivers at the top of the screen. That's eliminating defenders in the box. And so now it's an automatic give more times than not, unless they commit another defender inside. Bean with time connects. 
Should be close to first down yardage there for Jalen Darden. In fact, he does pick up the first down. Five yard catch for UNT's All-American candidate at wide receiver, the leading touchdown receiver in the nation. Look at this formation here. You got a little stack, right? About two yards off the sideline at the top. Just trying to create more room, more space to run the football a lot of times. Bean will run it, and he can run. Midfield, goodbye. Jason, Jason Bean will Bean. score. 76 yards, 66, 66 yards. yards Bean on the Green. run. Jason touchdown. Bean, touchdown, Mean Green. And that's why he's their starting quarterback. It's a read option, beautiful read here. They're expecting a give, and he pulls it, gets a nice block on the edge, and there is the speed of Jason Bean. It's that other dimension in the offense. And we've talked about his speed. I don't care how fast your defensive back is. If Jason Bean gets in the open field, you're not catching him. You're not him. catching him. How, can you, how many times can you say that about a quarterback? That's outstanding. So the main green on the board with 6.56 remaining in the first half. 66-yard run by Jason Bean makes it a three-point game. When he was an assistant at Stanford, Mike Bloomgren coached players like Christian McCaffrey and Bryce Love. He knows that you can get top-level athletic talent to a high academic university like a Stanford or a Rice, and that's what he's trying to put together right now in Houston, and I've been impressed with what this team has shown us so far. Well, I am too. They've they really set the bar, and that physicality is off the charts, certainly here this afternoon. Trammell with a return out to the 29. There's a penalty flag at the end of the run. On the other hand, North Texas, it looked like they were just looking for a spark to wake them up, and that Jason Bean 66-yard touchdown run no may have just been the trick. And it did, and they did a lot of that by formation. And it set that up to where Jason Bean could pull it on the read option and get up in that alley at times. So now you've got something else for that Rice Owls defense to think about. Now, complimentary football. What can the Mean Green defense do now? Now they've got some points on the board. Can they get the ball back to their offense? Collins will step under center eye formation for the Owls. And off to Griffin, he is hit in the backfield. Larry Nixon made the first hit and then the rest of the Mean Green in to drop Griffin for a two-yard gain. Yeah, you're starting to see a little bit of an adjustment. When they sense the formation, they'd like to run the inside ISO with the fullback lead. Now they're starting to send these linebackers and cre creep up in between the A and B gaps a little bit. You saw Larry Nixon cheat a little bit, and he was able to make the play right at the line of scrimmage just about. Second down and eight. Boy, North Texas crowding the box here, but only one receiver split out. Griffin bounces it to the outside, but wrapped up and dropped by Cam Johnson. Boy, if Cam wow. Johnson doesn't make that play. <laughs> yeah, he's still running. That was a lot of room over here, and it was two players out here. One of them was a Rice receiver, and the other was a defensive back. But look at the hole here, and look at Cam Johnson. Now, this will only go down as a tackle in the stat book, but it's bigger than that in the grand scheme of things because that could have been huge for the Rice Owls. Sun moving behind the clouds a bit here in Denton, Texas. Cooling off the field a bit, although it's a beautiful day. Nothing wrong with the conditions this afternoon. Whistles before the play on third and four. Before the snap, timeout North Texas, their first. It will be 30 seconds. North Texas called timeout before the snap. That's our referee, Jonathan Noli, who leads the crew today. North Texas, as we've talked about, they have not played since October 17th. 
35 days since the victory over Middle Tennessee. Their next game coming next week, assuming that everything goes according to plan, they will play UTSA. Big matchup because the Roadrunners are not a bad football team, number one. And number two, that is their Conference USA in-state rival that uh, they, <laughs> right. they love to go back and forth with. So should be a fun one next week for the Mean Green. Yeah, you know, the Roadrunners are trying to be bowl eligible. And depending on what they do here uh, on this afternoon today, uh, they would definitely be bowl eligible getting ready to play the Mean Green next week. So, yeah, a lot at stake for that game certainly next week. But both these teams, including the Mean Green right now in front of your screen, they've got to take care of business today against these Rice Owls. UTSA is at Southern Miss today to play the Golden Eagles, and that certainly is a winnable ball game. Hand off to Griffin. Griffin runs into a pile. They will give him a generous spot at around the 37-yard line, but that's still a, about a yard shy of a first down. And that will bring up fourth and one for the Owls. Here it is again. You know what's coming more times than not. And there is the point that I'm talking about. These defensive backs have to come up. They've got to be aggressive. They've got to be the extra guys in the box and run support. Cam Johnson's having a heck of a first half of the game here this afternoon. What Johnson really is, and you also give a little credit to Mikhail Sanders for being in there on the play as well. And that forces a punt for Rice. First punt of the afternoon, I believe, for the Owls. Let's see if the main green can set up return here for Jalen Darden. Darden will watch this one bounce and roll inside the 10 yard line. It will be down right at the 10. Charlie Mendez with the punt. And it's a good one for the Owls as it puts North Texas on their own 10 yard line when we return to Apogee Stadium. Back to Apogee Stadium in Denton. And you look at the game summary so far, North Texas being dominated statistically, but only a three-point game, LD. Yeah, and, and really a little bit of concern that Jason Bean's only two of six passing for 12 yards. And I don't know if that's a combination of good defense there by the Rice Isles, or it's just something in the game plan right now. They feel like they can really try to chip away at the running, uh, running against this defense. And you're right, though, it's only 10-7. DeAndre Torrey, the running back in on this series for North Texas across the 20 to the 21 yard line, seven yard pickup for Torrey, the senior out of Gaucher, Mississippi. Yeah, I've always liked DeAndre Torrey. He's uh, really compact, 5'7", 195 pounds. He's, he's a little bit of a bowling ball, but has that breakaway speed once he gets to the next level of the defense. Bean rolling out, throwing on the sideline, ball knocked down. Jason Bean's pass incomplete. Tip pass goes incomplete. It was knocked down by Miles McCord, who has the only interception of the year for the Rice Owls. Yeah, just a lot of traffic here. Jason Bean trying to extend the play. No really where to go with the ball. Tries to fit it in inside to Greg White. And well defended, like you mentioned, Miles McCord coming over and knocking it down. And Hey, that's a credit to the Rice Owls defense. They had to punt the ball away offensively. Their defense does the job. And now they give another chance for their offense here with three minutes and 21 seconds left. Austin Trammell back to receive the punt. Bernardo Rodriguez sends it sailing across midfield. Wow. Ball oh, is whoa. live, picked up by North Texas. There's a whistle. North Texas has the football. The That's ball was stripped wow. on the return. Austin Trammell gives it up. And North Texas comes up with it. Chris Thornton, the linebacker, I believe, is the one who recovered it on special teams. Ruling on the field. Yeah, here we go right punt. here. A little pick up. By the receiving number 26, team Alex Morris Texas. again. Coming First in. Down. Got a little bit of redemption. Oh, yeah. Alex Morris, wow. Got a little redemption right there. <laughs> and I was sitting there thinking, wow, why would he try to field that punt in the traffic? And, yes, you can clearly see the ball pop loose, and that's the second fumble recovery there and a much-needed turnover right for the Mean Green. North Texas 
had not recovered a fumble all season long coming into today's game. They've recovered two today. Their turnover ratio coming into the game today was a minus eight. As 13th in Conference USA, you would not be able to win a lot of games if you're at the bottom of the turnover uh, battle. And I don't think there's much to review in this one. This ball clearly comes out. I'm just surprised that Trammell tried to field it. Yeah, I was a little shocked. And I, and I know he's trying to protect the hidden yardage by not letting the ball roll out. But you can see there, a mean green defender is right up on him so quickly he couldn't put the ball away. Let's another look at it here. You know, you can't and say he didn't have control. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if he has control or not. If he touches the ball at any capacity, it then becomes a live ball. So you can't After say he review, had possession of it, the field, and then he confirmed. had a knee down and maybe lost it. Yeah, first down and 10, being green. Well, a terrific special teams play for North Texas, one they needed, as it gives them the ball first down on the Rice Al 38-yard line. Well, when you get that sudden exchange like that, you get a gift. You know, offensive coordinators from time to time, Tommy Maynard, you may want to see him take a shot here if you've got it. Bean rolls out, throws underneath. Nice move. DeAndre Torrey with the reception, not going very far, but good for about a four-yard gain. Second down and six coming up. Blaze Aldridge there to make the stop. Back to Torrey. And Torrey with some muscle running, about three yards, maybe a couple. Time starting to wind down here in the first half, 2.35 left to go. Third down and four for the Mean Green. And Torrey with the handoff again. Takes up the first down as Torrey works it to the 27-yard line with a five-yard pickup. Now you see the Mean Green committing to running the football. They don't care what the stats are. This shows how good the Rice defense is against the run. They have committed to it and sticking to it here now. Beam standing in the pocket, delivers incomplete. He was trying to find Greg White. Good coverage. And good coverage indeed by Andrew Bird, 6'1 sophomore. Now, you know, these defensive backs, hey, the coordinator's going to put them out there on an island by themselves. So they've got to be aggressive at times because they do have safety help over the top. So that allows these cornerbacks to play over the top of the ball and be aggressive like that. Good play there by Bird. Second down and 10. And off Attaway. And Oscar Attaway fights for a couple of yards to the 25 before he's pushed back. That was Cheeky Inagobu with the tackle on the play. Inagobu, he, watch him read this play beautifully. You see Attaway, he steps to his left and he's trying to cut back, but there he is right there in the hole to meet the play. These linebackers are so smart, yet they're so physical, and they've been able to really kind of keep this running game in check somewhat. Jason Bean checks the sideline. Play clock down to five. Got five in the box here. And a timeout call. Timeout, North Texas. They're set. It will be 30 North seconds. Texas calls the timeout. It's their second. Facing third and eight. North Texas trying to take a lead in this ball game for the first time today. They trailed 10-7. Started off 3-0. Colin Ricciatelli with a 45-yard field goal for the Owls on their opening possession. Their second drive, they marched 97 yards downfield and Mike Collins finds Austin Trammell for the touchdown pass. But since then, the Mean Green have stifled this race offense and they've been able to have a touchdown of their own with Jason Bean's 66 yard run. And they've been able to get a couple of takeaways, which is huge, especially against this Rice Owls offense. I think the defense has played one of their better games you know, through this first half of the contest. And now the Mean Green got a beautiful opportunity now. Uh, they don't have any timeouts remaining. Excuse me, they've got two timeouts remaining. They got a chance here to get some points on the board. Jason Bean throwing over the middle. Darden 
at the 10, cuts back five, diving for the end zone. Did he reach it? Jalen Darden, touchdown number 11. And the 30th of his career, one away from tying Ron Shanklin for the all-time North Texas lead. Now this is drawn up beautifully. They get him matched up man-to-man -man in the middle of the field, and it's curtains. At this moment right here, the defensive back is beat. And there's nothing that anybody in the secondary can do when number one gets in open space. One of the most dynamic and electric players in the country, certainly. Leading the nation in touchdown receptions, now 11 on the year. The senior out of the Houston area played at all Dean Eisenhower, and he's given North Texas a 13-10 lead. Uh, it's just incredible how he can put his foot in the ground so quickly, and then he can change the direction. Watch this here, watch it catch this. This is a great read here by Jason Bain. He saw it immediately. Watch this here, boom. And just to get up, and to get up the field so quickly, I don't see anything in that shot to say that it's not a touchdown. Here's a better look. This is what the quarterback sees, a max protect. There's a blitz on, make a guy miss, and then now it's all about how bad do you want it. And this is why Jason Bede is starting to take his game to the next level. You know, as a quarterback, you want them to blitz you because now the coverage is identified so easily. Watch it is here, change of direction, see if this knee touches. And you see why Pro Football Focus has Jalen Darden ranked as the ninth best receiver in FBS football. And a young man that's getting some notice as a potential NFL draft pick yeah. next year. After Absolutely. further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Our ref, Jonathan Noli, says touchdown is good. And now Ethan Mooney on to attempt the extra point to give North Texas a four-point lead. Mooney's kick is true, and the Mean Green, after trailing 10-0 and taking a 14-10 lead with a minute nine remaining in the first half. Now how about the Mean Green to weather the storm? Yeah, it was a little shaky, and I, I think you hit something on the head, Doug. I, I just think they just hadn't played football in 35 days, which is what has happened, and they came out just a little bit off, off kilter, a little bit out of sync. And now that they've kind of settled in, the defense has settled in, the offense making explosive plays, which they've done the entire season long. They are lethal, but they are on the same page. And you can see that connection from Bean to Dart there, just, just really too tough to handle there for the White House. Six plays, 38 yards, two minutes on the drive, ending in a 25-yard touchdown pass from Jason Bean to Jalen Darden. For Bean, that's his seventh touchdown pass of the season. Only one interception for Bean this year. Short kick, fielded up at the 22-yard line. Oh. And nothing really on the return, only a couple of yards. Jordan Miles with the return for the Rice Owls, and the Owls have 65 seconds to work with here at the end of the first half. Well, are the Rice Owls gonna open the offense back up? We saw them a little bit more explosive, and especially in that first quarter. And, you know, it's a combination of the Mean Green defense having to make their adjustments, but the explosiveness of the vertical passing game of the Rice Owls offense has been non-existent here in the second quarter. Collins crossing over the middle, Miles on the reception, and he will pick up the first down up at the 40-yard line. Yeah, good protection there by this offensive line. The Mean Green only rush eight, so you've got uh, three, I'm sorry, and they've got eight into coverage, and they drag the receiver across that zone, and he was wide open for a first down. Jordan Myers, a 6'2 senior out of Dickinson, Texas.
giving the, Ming, the, the Owls a first down, 59 seconds remaining in the first half. Collins steps up, and he will take off. There's a penalty flag as Collins is pushed out of bounds around the 45-yard line. Wait the call from uh, Jonathan Noli here. Well, Clay Servin and Devontae McCray were back here doing a I don't know if they were doing an alligator arm wrestling contest, a leg whipping contest or something. They were back here doing some wrestling moves behind the scenes. Holding offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Whatever play serving did, he got called for because it's coming back. But, man, they were back here. Doing some wrestling moves. Here's another look. Yeah, here you go again. He it's a takedown, so that's the actual call. And then he just lays on it. That's where the penalty flag came in. Serving a 6'4", 292-pound sophomore. Collins hit, but delivers it complete. Trammell with the reception, but... Not much there. Collins pass complete to number 10. Defense starting to fly around, around even more now. Now, this is a strength, I think, the mean green defense. Down, when they know you're going to pass, they've got all kinds of speed at all positions on the team here on the defense here. There's a sack here. And it's Dion Noville. The, play by Dion Noville. the unblockable Noville. Once again, wreaking havoc in the Rice backfield. This is great defense. Anytime you find out three, for and he just absolutely beats Klarkowski. They're, they're going to have to give Klarkowski some help. We got an injured Mean Green on uh, player on the ground here. Gabriel Murphy, that's number 35, but they have no answer for 97 on defense. He is disrupting everything that they're looking to do running the ball and passing the ball. His brother Grayson checking in over there to make sure he's okay. Gabriel Murphy sitting up now. Here it is again. They're only rushing three. Yeah, you can just see how he just kind of gets trampled at the top. Because he's blocked inside one man. And an injury on the field. There is a 10 second runoff. That is the end of the first Gabriel half. Murphy now able to walk off the field with the assistance of the training staff. And that will be the end of the first half. North Texas falls behind 10-0, early going, but then able to race back to take a four-point lead at the half. It is a four-point lead for the Mean Green at the half as they lead the Rice Owls 14 to 10. Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean with you from Apogee Stadium on the campus of the University of North Texas. And there you see the wind turbines right outside the stadium. Apogee Stadium was the first newly constructed collegiate football stadium to achieve a lead platinum certification in the United States, making it not only the home of the Mean Green, but a green stadium as well. Forward thinking here at the University right. of North Texas. How about that? Certainly a beautiful place to come watch a game on a beautiful day and two competitive teams having a great game. And the numbers will bear that out as we take a look at the first half stats. LD, it didn't look too good. Promising for North Texas at the end of one quarter, but that second quarter really turned things around for the Mean Green. Yeah, you just see the explosiveness that they can do, and it took one play from Jason Bean that opened up some other avenues. They started to chip away with the run, and then one flick of the wrist to Jalen Darden, and it turns around. Now they're up 14-10, but I think the Rice Owls did some good things in that first half. They controlled the pace of the game. They need to get back to trying to establish the run and then take their home run shots if they can downfield. 
Both teams also doing some good things defensively. Look at the third down conversions for these two teams. The defenses have stepped up in those third down situations. Yeah, and it's really put these offenses in a bind at times, and the defense in timely situations have gotten off the field, and that's what you play complimentary football. That's how you get it done. 14-10, North Texas on top at the break. When we come back, a closer look at record-setting wide receiver Jalen Darden. You're watching North Texas and Rice on ESPN. Coming into today's ball game, it was a battle that set up against two of the top receivers in Conference USA, Austin Trammell and Jalen Darden. Trammell has five catches for 98 yards and a touchdown today. Jalen Darden only two catches for 31, but he does has, have his 11th touchdown reception of the season. And LD, Jalen Darden, well, that touchdown was a thing of beauty. It was It was really everything that you know about Jalen Dard, his ability to get open and what he can do after the catch. It's so explosive. It's really difficult for defensive backs to even get a handle to even slow him down. And we have a chance now to take a closer look at Jalen Darden as he closes in on the all-time touchdown lead here at the University of North Texas. Making someone miss is like... Waking up in the morning and brushing my teeth. I got to do it every day. <laughs> uh, Darn's footwork is something to behold. Coming out of routes, just really gifted. JD has the ability to move at a, a lightning speed that can go from zero to 100 really quick. I think he is really elite in a thing called Twitch. It, it's unbelievable. Obviously, it's very fast. Now he's quick twitched. Gets it at the 19. Loses a couple of defenders. Finds some room up the seam across midfield. Oh, yeah, slow feet don't eat. And he's going to take this one over. When I was younger, my older brother, he played football. I kind of followed his footsteps with the receivers. Uh, he had me out there doing the ladder drills at like six years old. So after that, I started just picking it up. I kind of took pride in that, and ever since then, I just rep his repetition. It was more so of me running routes, getting my expectations of my routes down, and now I feel like that's why I'm here today. Coming out of Trav High School, JD was the jovial, enthusiastic, you know, kind of guy that's dancing out there and you know making his moves, you know, when he's not practicing. And watching him grow over the last four years, um, his maturity level of wanting uh, of wanting to be great. The longer he's around, the more comfortable he's gotten. Um, you know, he's a he's a fun guy to be around. He's very competitive. Uh, he's one of those guys that's again, uh, like so many of the great ones, he's always played with a chip on his shoulder because everybody's told him, uh, you know, he wasn't going to be able to do something because of his size. It started at a young age. A lot of people have been saying, "I'm too short. I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do that." So I already knew that I was smaller than everybody. So I had to separate myself some way somehow. So honestly, I just put it on my shoulder and just run with it. Uh, I take it as motivation. He always understands how to find that leverage and that separation. He understands when you have to be tied on the defender to make a break to get your separation. And then he also understands how to avoid people and not get touched and play fast. He's got a great understanding of, of who he is and how to use his abilities. His size is to his advantage in his route running. You know, he's got a great understanding of leverage. So someone wants to wall him, put their hands on him maybe get him to change direction. He's got a great understanding of how to get his pads lower than, than the hands or uh, where to stem him, uh, lean and stem him so they can't get their hands on him. I don't like getting touched, so however I have to not get touched and get vertical, that's the, that's the move I'm going with. I don't care what it is. It's just a natural instinct. A beautiful day in Denton. Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean with you this afternoon as North Texas leads Rice 14 to 10 at the half in this Conference USA matchup. Both teams coming off long layoffs due to game postponements, but 
it, while it took a few minutes to get their sea legs, these two teams have, have really sparked it up, I would say, here in the second part of the uh, first half. And now I would look for a really entertaining second half coming your way. Yeah, I think they knocked the rust off there at the beginning. And now we're going to probably see the best and throw some good punches here in the second half. Take a look at some of those first half highlights. Jason Bean, he was 4 of 10 passing, wasn't great through the air, but did connect a couple of times with Jalen Darden, including a touchdown pass, also had the 66-yard touchdown run. And that's the thing that matters the most. If you don't have your A game, hey, it's all about how can you help the offense move the ball. He scores here on a run, and then he was able to find Darden later across the middle of the field for the next score of the game to put him up 14 to 10. So Jason Bean leading this team out to a 14-10 lead here in the first half. What about Rice? Well, they've been using Mike Collins pretty effectively in this first half. You saw Darden there with the touchdown. Collins, a pretty gaudy 10 of 12 in that first half for 163 yards. Well, I thought he looked very poised. He looked very confident and had clean pockets for the first part of that uh, first half there and was able to go to a variety of different targets. Obviously, he found Trammell five times in that first half, but he was able to move the offense very efficiently and very effectively. They mixed in the runs, but I thought he was in full command of his game in that first half. Mike Collins with nine touchdown passes on the year, only one interception on the season, and we saw that accuracy. That was a beautiful pass to Trammell late in the first half. So a look at some of the highlights and the key players from the first half of the game. Let's see who turns out to be a star here in the second half when we get ready for the second half kickoff, which comes your way next on ESPN. Mean Green set to receive the ball to start the second half. They won the toss at the beginning of the game and deferred their option. So North Texas will take the ball here in the third quarter as Colin Ricciatelli gets ready to kick it away. Happy to have you with us in Denton this afternoon. Doug Anderson and Ladarren McLean on the call as Rice playing only their third game of the year trying to give themselves a two and one start in Conference USA play, but North Texas with the lead at the moment. And the kick caught out of bounds by the Mean Green. This should move the ball up to about the 35 yard line for North Texas. A good kick out of bounds. Position field wise the for them to start this drive. Yard line. First down. First down. Well, can this offense get back to what they were doing? North Texas 22 and four when leading at the half under head coach Seth Luttrell. They have had an outstanding record here at Apogee Stadium as well under coach Luttrell and they'll try to keep that trend going here this afternoon in the second half. No game for Jalen Darden on the reception stopped at the 35 yard line. Good play by Treshawn Chamberlain and the linebacking crew. Yeah, and Treshawn Chamberlain is actually like an extra safety on defense. He's only 5'10", 204 pounds. He's an outside linebacker, but essentially he's just another big, strong safety that can get to the offensive of player as well. Penalty flag thrown. There's going to be a holding against the offensive line for North Texas as the pass was completed by Holden, Jason Bean. Offense number 89, 10-yard penalty. Find Katie Wiles. I'm sorry to interrupt Jonathan Noli, but uh, we'll take a look at it here, and you'll see that hold as Trey Schumann was coming around the edge with a beat on Jason Bean. Now, this is not the way you want to start that second-half drive, right? You want to... You want to come out there and build off the momentum you had to close the second, or excuse me, the first half. And now they've kind of gone backwards and put themselves in a predicament to where they're now going to be one-dimensional. And this defense is good enough to react and be able to handle it. Second and 20, throw what across the middle and a tremendous grab by Austin Ogenmaken. And that's going to give the Mean Green a manageable third down after that second and 20. Look at this. That is what you're talking about. It's a fearless mentality. If you're playing receiver, you've got to go across that middle with no fear. That was an acrobatic, beautiful catch there. 14-yard gain. 
Well, just like that, Doug, you, you get a huge gain, and, and it's third and six. You're back to being manageable, and they've been pretty good on the season, 52, almost 53% on the year. Oscar Attaway, first down and more. The freshman out of North Little Rock picking up a first down for the Mean Green and moving the ball into Rice territory. Well, sometimes you just get another running back in the backfield. They just see things a little differently. Here it is. This is a beautiful hole here. Great job by Antarius Gray, big number 51, the left guard. Another run for Attaway. This time another eight yards. And I'm not going to brag on myself, but at the break in the half we were talking, and I said <laughs> I need to see more for Oscar Attaway in the second half. Yeah, I'll brag on you, partner. And it looks, <laughs> it's a good call. Looks like we are going to do that. There's another run for Attaway, and he'll pick up the first down, a three-yard gain. Well, we saw the very first game that they played this year against Houston Baptist, and Attaway in his first collegiate game comes out and runs for 118 yards, <laughs> and we're like, okay, well, this is the future of the North Texas running back crew, so I'm glad to see him after the injury back on the field, and I think he's got a tremendous future for North Texas. Here's the senior who has led them the last few years, DeAndre Torrey. He'll pick up about three. I think what's helped this offense is having Manasseh Mose back, too, because you remember in Houston Baptist, although they ran for over offense of 700 yards or more, Manasseh Mose makes this thing go. He's the anchor of the offensive line. He's the quarterback up front, and he gets everybody lined up and ready to go. Pass caught by Ogan making good for a first down. You're kidding me. All, all this guy does is make incredible <laughs> catches. Give him something difficult to make, I guess. I mean, these catches are extremely difficult to make. I'm out on the field for injury. And he's made back-to-back -back beautiful catches here. Miles McCord was in coverage, and McCord still on the turf for the Rice Owls as the trainers look to him. Let's take another look at that play. Well, look at the accuracy first by Jason Bean, and then you just see the concentration to hold in the pass, and yeah, Miles McCord gets the bad end of that. With McCord on the field, we'll take a timeout. North Texas driving, leading 14 to 10. First and 10 for North Texas. Ball on the Rice 24 yard line as they look to continue this drive to open the third quarter. But a flag on the play before the snap. Ball start, offense, number 14, five yard penalty, remains first down. Ball start against the main green. Now first and 15 for the main green. And off to Attaway. And Oscar Attaway picks up the five yards back to the original line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up. Yeah, that's a good job by the Wiles, uh, excuse me, the Rice Owls defensive line. They, they make it a tough little wall there, and Attaway could not bounce it to the outside. Good tacklers on the defense. Really, both defenses tackling very well. It's Jason Bean to keep it. He rolls right to the 15 and pushed out of bounds Jason at the 11-yard line. Jason Bean with a 13-yard run. And a first down for the Mean Green. And this is just speed. Blaze Aldrich is in position to make the play right there. One of your leading tacklers in Conference USA, and he cannot track down B. Attaway try to earn the tough yards through the middle. Picks up one to the 10-yard line. Yeah, this is a stout defensive front. You know, we talked about Elijah Garcia, you know, a returning senior up front. We're taking a look at uh, Big number 11, Cameron Valentine, DeBraylon Carroll, number 55 on the front. These guys making it awfully tough in the inside. And they're just platooning guys up front. Beam, tossed to the end zone, jump ball, incomplete. He was trying to find Ogan making in the back part of that end zone, but it was well played by the Rice Owls in the secondary. Wow, yeah. When was the last time you see number 96 <laughs> in the secondary? 
Uh, we got uh, almost running out of jerseys. It looks like. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try to guess who that is because I don't know. Uh, they've got the... they've got 96 on their roster listed as a 6'2", 310 pound defensive lineman, and that's not him. So. <laughs> oh man. Beam, rolling, throws to the end zone, incomplete. Darden was the closest receiver in the area. And that will bring up fourth down and nine, and I would imagine we'll see Ethan Mooney come on for a field goal attempt. That's a nice job by the Owls defense. They they really covered on the back end well. Dean did want to go to Darden, and Darden tried to go to the corner, but it was well defensed. And then you saw Antonio Montero applying the pressure. Seven yard attempt for Ethan Mooney, who has struggled a bit this year, only two of six on field goals. This one, however, is good, and it gives North Texas a seven point lead. 9.56 remaining in the third, North Texas. 17 10 over the Rice Owls here on ESPN. Senior day here at North Texas, Jalen Darden among the seniors that was recognized by head coach Seth Luttrell before the game. And these seniors are performing well this afternoon, LD. Guys like Jalen Darden, Dion Noville, Mikhail Sanders, all made plays this afternoon. Kick sailing to the five yard line, taken by Austin Trammell. I actually make that Bailey. And Bailey is out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Good return by Jake Bailey. Speaking of Dion Noville, five tackles for loss in this ball game. That is one shy of the school record for tackles for loss in a single game set by Brandon Booger Kennedy back in 2002 <laughs> against Idaho. He had six tackles for loss in that game. Talked about another freakish defensive Lineman oh, coming yeah. through here. He was probably the only guy about 5'9", 300 pounds that could dunk a basketball <laughs> flat-footed. Hand off to Kalen Griffin. And Griffin will pick up four up to the 33-yard line. Larry Nixon, a sophomore out of North Richland Hills, Texas with the tackle. They got a lot of young players on that defense. Only four seniors on defense. They've got two juniors and two sophomores, sophomores, three freshmen in the starting lineup as of this afternoon playing. And they're led by the big daddy in the middle right there, Dion Noville. Second down and six, and Collins will run. Not much there. Pick up of two up to the 35 yard line. And that's something that I was interested in talking to you about with both teams. Very young squads between these two programs. You look at Rice, they are littered across the defense <laughs> with the sophomores and redshirt freshmen. Uh, offensively, their offensive line only has one upperclassman. That's a grad transfer who's uh, Jorvon Wolford at right tackle. Everybody else is a sophomore or a junior or even a redshirt freshman in one case. And uh, we do have an injured Mean Green player on the field. We were just talking about Larry Nixon. Looks like that's him. Are you talking about a guy that has had to step up? I think he's risen to the challenge here this afternoon. You hope he can just shake whatever that is and get back going. He's a versatile player. I, I, I really enjoy these athletic, physical, uh, six foot, 225 plus loud, uh, linebackers that can run sideline to sideline. And Eric, Larry Nixon, you hope he's okay because he just makes this defense pretty lethal and they can cover a lot of turf. Came into the game with 28 tackles, three and a half, four loss. So Larry Nixon comes out and it's third and four for the Rice Owls. Collins 
throws one underneath. Nutt able to pick up the first down. The pass was complete. Catch made by Robert French, the tight end, but an excellent job by the Mean Green defense, led by Jordan Brown, who came in to take the place of Larry Nixon. Well, he just diagnosed this play from the get-go. You mentioned it coming in and replacing Larry Nixon, but he read his keys, he looked to the sideline to cover the flat, and he looked immediately for the dragger across the middle of the formation, and he met the receiver at the point of contact, and he certainly won that matchup. Charlie Mendez to punt the ball away, Jalen Darden. We'll take it and try to return it. Across the 20, 25, penalty flags flying in back at the 12 yard line. There was a bit of a kerfuffle, if you will, between Jake Bailey for the Rice Owls and Kyle Sanders for North Texas. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number 10, half the distance to the goal, first down. So that penalty will cost North Texas half the distance to the goal and they will be pinned back at their own 12 yard line or actually seven yard line to start this drive. Yeah, Coach Latrell wants it a little bit of an explanation. He looks like he may have saw that play happen a little differently and Back judge is trying to go explain it to him, and nonetheless, we play on. Jason Bean remains in at quarterback for North Texas. Take the hit, ball, keep it himself, and tackled at the 15-yard line, crunched down at the 15 after an eight-yard gain. And that's a nice drive starter obviously to this possession here. And they get way ahead of the chains. And, and I think that's paramount. This is a nice little read option. It's probably an automatic keep because you've got the, the center pulling out, lead blocking. And now it's second and short. You've opened up the playbook for them. And off, not much there for DeAndre Torrey. Picked up about a yard. So third and one coming up for North Texas. Get a look at Blaze Aldridge manning that linebacking crew. He's been a factor today. He lines up on the edge for this play. Handoff goes to DeAndre Torrey. He'll fight his way to a first down up near the 20 yard line. Yeah, this is just a fine piece of running here by DeAndre Torrey. And this defense, they go up, they've got a six man front. So they're knowing the run is coming their way. Not a whole lot there, but DeAndre Torrey finds a little bit of a soft spot. It is able to get the yard to make. Bean wants to throw, goes downfield, has a man caught, and is it <laughs> Austin Ogan make it again? Oh, man. The third tremendous catch here in the third quarter for Austin Ogan make it. Just throw him the football anywhere. Just put it up in the play and he will go make it. I actually think Miles McCord, who's back in the game, is in pretty good position to make the play. Wow. That is tremendous. Handoff to Oscar Attaway. He'll pick up about a yard on first down. Ogan Macon's catch goes for 38 yards to put North Texas into Rice territory. Well, Ogan Macon is 6'3", 192 pounds. And it's a nice matchup against Miles McCourt. Miles McCourt, 6'1", 160, give or take. But he has dominated that matchup on the far sideline. Beam, crossing, ball tipped up in the air, incomplete. Oh, man. Almost intercepted. <laughs> Woo, that was close for North Texas. As Treshawn Chamberlain also almost grabbed an interception. That's a pretty good pass here by Jason Bean. And and very seldomly do you see these receivers in the main green lose passes. Like it was a little bit behind him there. It was Deion Hare Griffin, the receiver, tried to make the play. 
Gallery Torrey checks into the backfield, stands next to Jason Bean. Pass to the far sideline. This time incomplete. Logan Macon could not make that catch. Now, Trey Schumann, I, I think he's played an outstanding game. I should come across there to, uh, excuse me, not Trey Schumann, that's Prudy Calderon. I thought it was a seven from way over here, but Rudy Calderon has played a nice game, certainly in the secondary. He's been a force in the run game also and gets his defense off the field here on a third down. North Texas set to punt the ball away. Bernardo Rodriguez stands at his own 43-yard line. Line drive kick, and this one will go all the way into the end zone. I believe they'll know. They will let it roll. Tremendous special teams effort by North Texas. Well, are they calling it a touchback or not? <laughs> Looks like they're calling it a touchback. So Mean Green unable to pin the ball deep in Rice's territory. Al's down by seven. They'll have the ball when we come back. Seventeen to ten, North Texas leads Rice. Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean with you from Apogee Stadium this afternoon. Collins throwing to an open receiver downfield. Bailey incomplete. Jake Bailey went up for it, couldn't come down with it. Bring up second down and ten. Good coverage downfield for North Texas by John Davis. Yeah, and John Davis actually gets beat a little bit, but the ball's hang, hung up a little bit too long. That allowed John Davis to come back in and make the play. And the ball also drifted out of bounds. So even if it was a completion, it would not have stand. Yeah, good coverage uh, to least. These defensive backs, they're gonna have to live and die and, and get some in-game experience by being out there man-to-man -man by themselves sometimes. Collins a keeper and Dion Noville. Makes the stop after a gain of about one. It's been eons since North Texas had a player drafted into the NFL. And you look around on Sundays and you'll see North Texas players, Jeff Wilson with the San Francisco 49ers, Jalen Guyton with the Chargers. You got Orr, the linebacker playing in Baltimore but they haven't really had any players drafted yeah. in a long time. And Dion Noville or Jalen Darden might very well change that after this season for UNT. Pass goes over the middle, Trammell with the catch up at the 40 yard line. 18 yard gain for Trammell, a first down for Rice. Now this is where Mike Collins is at his best. He's 6'5", so he can see across the defense. He scans left and then sees his secondary receiver crossing the middle of the field. And why not get the ball to Austin Trammell? It's a nice play there by the Rice Owls to convert. I want to mention Craig Robertson, too, the yeah. linebacker in New Orleans. Not wanting to forget about him. <laughs> Collins toss it, complete at midfield. Jordan Myers with the reception, picks up a first down, 12 yards as he moves the ball to the North Texas 48. And, and this is where I think the offense is at their peak. When they can throw the ball seven to 10 yards forward across the line of scrimmage, this is where they can really attack the defense. When they go sideline to sideline, North Texas has too much speed and they can recover to those passes. But if he can stand back there tall, they give him time, this defense is gonna be in trouble. Collins steps up, heaves one downfield, incomplete, overthrew Bailey on the play. Second down and 10. Yeah, Doug, that pass had to be almost perfect. Even though the receiver, he had a step on the defensive back. It's a little tight window, and that's a deep throw to make accurate. But I do like the, the, the challenge there, though. You're, you're challenging the secondary. You're making them have to come up and make a play. Off a defense that gives up 306 yards passing per game. That is bottom of Conference USA. Collins 
finds Myers. And Myers picks up a first down as he is able to advance to the 37 yard line. Pick up an 11 for Jordan Myers. You look at Collins, leading Conference USA in passing efficiency. 181.3, a tremendous number for the grad transfer out of TCU. Now granted, that is through two games and some change now. Everybody else has played at least five games, so. A little bit of a small yeah, sample a size. A little bit of an asterisk <laughs> there, but hey, nonetheless, he, he's still efficient nonetheless. He's still doing what he needs to do for this team to be effective offensively. Throwing deep, again overthrows the receiver. Incomplete as he was looking for Andrew Mason. And that will bring up the second out and 10, but small sample size or not. You have seen yeah. this Rice football team struggle over the years to find a quarterback. How many guys they've rotated through. Oh my gosh. And they finally have a dude <laughs> that, they, <laughs> that they can say, this is our guy. Well, this is the sixth quarterback in the sixth year yeah. that they've gone to to have a starter. <laughs> and they, I think they found their guy, uh, certainly to get them through the 2020 campaign. Collins steps up, wrapped up at the 35 yard line by Noville. They'll give him the 34, so a pick him a three on the play. Well, you know, if that's uh, maybe Jason Bean running that quarterback draw, he might score. But let's be fair to Mike Collins here. That's not his gift. He's a big quarterback, he's mobile, but again, to try to bust a long one out there is not going to be his forte against a fast defense like the Mean Green. Minute 40 left in the third. North Texas leading 17 to 10. Rice on the move. Well, they've been two of eight in the game so far on third down. Collins in trouble. Collins dropped for a loss on third down. KD Davis, the middle linebacker with his third sack of the season. Yeah, this is a beautiful defensive call. Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator, he has KD Davis spying. Look at it. And he's anticipating that quarterback draw again if they decide to do it. And if the quarterback decides to scramble, KD Davis is going to gobble that up every single time. It's good defense there. Jalen Darden will stand at his own 10 yard line while Charlie Mendez prepares to kick the ball away. Darden gets out of the way and he should. That ball bounces into the end zone. Touchback and the Mean Green will have it leading 17-10 with only 43 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll take a look, uh, LD, if we can, at Conference USA standings in North Texas and Rice are battling neck and neck right in the middle of the pack, really, between uh, these two teams for a chance to get up to the top of the Conference USA standings. You see them there, one and one and one and two, respectively. You may be on top, but really, as Jalen Darden makes a nice move, out of bounds at the 40-yard line, pick up a 20 for Jalen Darden. Really, those standings, I'm not really sure what to make of them yeah, because know who either. knows? Who knows who's going to be playing and who's not going to be playing? Who knows whether or not there will even be a conference championship game? I mean, they, all of that is up in the air right now. That's why you just got to play the game on the field and win the game in front of you. DeAndre Torrey breaking free into Rice territory down at the 34-yard line. Now, now you're starting to see an experienced offensive line. Look at Dayson Carroll here, number 78. He just comes out and he just blows up the outside linebacker there. That created a nice little gas for DeAndre Torrey. This time Torrey wrapped up, lost a yard. Piercy with the tackle. Josh That's the end Piercy of the third in. quarter. Red shirt freshman. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. So we go to the final 15 minutes from Apogee Stadium in Denton. North Texas, 17, Rice, 10, back in a moment on ESPN.
It's a seven point Mean Green lead as we head to the fourth quarter in Denton. Doug Anderson and Ladera McLean, happy to have you with us on ESPN this afternoon. Conference USA matchup, North Texas trying to even their record on the year at three and three. Jason Bean airs one to Jalen Darden in the end zone, incomplete. As the ball falls into the end zone, Darden looking for his second touchdown of the day. There you see the coverage there over the top and Treshawn Chamberlain, they move him all over the field. He was actually playing the uh, half deep safety that time and he came over for the extra coverage over the top. So now third and 11. Jason Bean, nine of 20 on the afternoon. One touchdown, no interceptions. DeAndre Torrey finds a hole. Torrey cuts it left, 25 yard line. First down for DeAndre Torrey at the 21 yard line, a 14 yard run. Oh, he just has a knack of just finding those little bitty creases. And he can take a little bitty crease like this right there and make a sidestep jump cut. And then all of a sudden he's upfield for the game to make. Torrey tries to spin away from Aldridge, but plays Aldridge there to wrap him up. Senior out of Celebration, Florida with the tackles. Yeah, certainly a good football player. Third in Conference USA and tackles per game. Just a little over 10 and a half. And he's just been the leader right there. He's been there since day one. Oscar Attaway checks in. Attaway fighting his way to the 12 yard line. Six yards, maybe seven on the play for Oscar Attaway. Doug, you see this offensive line again, establishing the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage in the first half was right at the line of scrimmage, or maybe even a yard back. Now it's two or three yards upfield. And as I say that, here come the Rice Owls making a play in the backfield. Wow, well, that's a huge play, too. Attaway step for a loss on third and one. And that will bring up a fourth down. And rather than putting yourself in a position to have first and goal, now you bring Ethan Mooney on for a field goal attempt. Just too much Christmas penetration. And DeBraylon Carroll, the sophomore out of Duncanville, Texas, making his presence known here for a huge stop. And well, he made the stop, and now he's down yeah, he's on the hurt. turf. Yeah. So unfortunate for Rice as Carroll is being checked out by the training staff here. You notice a little wrinkle with the Rice uniforms this year, the numbers on the helmet. Normally they have that old English R on both sides, but now the R is on one side and the number of the player on the other side. Interesting look for the Rice out. I'm digging the look. I, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty neat. I think you and I were talking about it a little bit earlier. North Texas going with a black jersey and the black helmet with the green eagle emblem on the side. 31-yard field goal attempt for Ethan Mooney, and it is good as Mooney gives the Mean Green a 10-point lead. 20 to 10, the new score, 13-03 remaining in the ball game. North Texas with a 20 to 10 lead. The quarterback this afternoon for the Mean Green with a big play, a 66 yard touchdown. As you look at the comparison between Jason Bean and Mike Collins. Short kick will be taken at the four yard line by Bailey and Jake Bailey hurtling over the 25. Jake Bailey on the return. Up in and around the 27 yard line. I like the way Jake Bailey ran it up in there though. He kind of took himself. He goes airborne at the initial. It wasn't really the hit. He goes airborne. And it makes it look a lot more than what it really was. It's still a good play on the kick coverage team. Jordan Rucker, one of these backup defensive backs. Or Cubia, Will Keeney. That was Keeney. 
that was a that was the guy that uh, South Latrell was threatening to play at center if, if they had to to uh, get this ball game yeah. played today. Hey, hey, all, by all means necessary, we're going to play this game today. Keeney, a backup quarterback who plays on the special teams. Got to get used to college football. You got everybody wearing double numbers. Boy, you, got double. Two, you got two fours. You got yeah. a little bit of everything. <laughs> I think I've done this a little while. You think I'd catch on to it by now. You know what? It throws me still to this day sometimes, especially if the guy's not a very prominent yeah. part of the offense or defense. Hand off to Griffin. And Griffin with enough to pick up a first down as he moves it to the 38-yard line. Yeah, it's go time for the Rice Owls offense. You know, they, they've been stagnant, and they haven't put points on the board in quite some time. And it's, it's time to do it because now you're not only against a defense that's playing one of their better games of the season, this clock is going to kind of be an issue here before too long. So you've got to try to make some hay here on this drive and get something out of this. They had some success passing the ball, but didn't get anything out of that drive. Collins. Oh, nice. Larry play. Nixon buries Mike Collins at the 26-yard line. Larry Nixon the third, we saw him walk off a little banged up earlier, but showing no ill effects here. Now, uh, Matt Collins just gets a no man's land, and it's almost like a deer in headlights. Look, you get frozen, and Larry Nixon just comes on a beeline there and makes the sack in the backfield. A couple of years ago, a pretty highly regarded recruit coming out of Richland High School, and. Boy, has he really made an impact now just a sophomore for the Mean Green defense. Look out. Collins wrapped up, and Collins is dropped for a loss. Now, Devontae McBride, this is another defensive player that they platoon in and out to get the reputations, and they just go Special under time out siege, the field for injury. and they're meeting at the quarterback, Grayson Murphy and Devontae McBride, McCray. And Grayson Murphy here. Injury timeout in Denton. North Texas with back-to-back 11-yard -back sacks of Mike Collins makes it third and 32. And LD, if there's one thing that Seth Luttrell wanted to see from his team today, it was an improved defensive performance and he has seen it. Boy, he is getting it. They're flying around. When you fly around, that makes up a lot of uh, mistakes. Here they come again. Coming after Collins, he delivers and complete. Was looking for Jordan Myers, but the pass was broken up. And that will bring up fourth down and Larry Nixon the third celebrating with his teammates as a great defensive stand for North Texas results in a punt for Rice. Well, this is all about hustle. It's all about effort on that side of the ball on defense. You can always make for up for mistakes if you get after the offensive player. These guys are flying around. They're playing for one another. They're playing team defense. And that's why you're seeing the type of performance you've seen here. They've shut this offense down, and it's been a long time. They put points on the board. DeAndre Torrey will take the punt, and a good return across the Rice 40 to the 39-yard line. So a first down for the Mean Green. They'll spot it at the 38, and this is an opportunity for North Texas to really kind of put this ball game away if they can come away with a touchdown on this drive. Yeah, you're sitting at a two-score game. You'd like to have scored a touchdown on the possession before, but you did kick the field goal. But here it is now. It's right here in front of you. If you can somehow get this ball in the end zone, you got to like your chances to close this thing out, especially the way your defense is working on three shutout quarters. Hand off to Oscar Attaway. And Attaway. Breaks through the middle of the field across the 30 to the 28-yard line. 11 yards, a first down for the freshman out of North Little Rock. Well, here it is again. It's just a little bit of a zone play. They match up well. They block it textbook up front. And Attaway again gashes the defense when he's in the game.
Handoff. 25 yard line. And that's all Attaway will get on that run. Right to the 25 yard line, gain of three yards. Three yard gain. Attaway, 14 carries Lays for 72 yards Second down and seven this afternoon. Now this offense is quietly getting back to, to the pace that they've set. It's 255 yards rushing per game, first in Conference USA. And they're flirting with that never again. They're at 238 yards rushing so far in the contest. And this is what this is, the identity of this football team and this offense is run the football and take your chances in the passing game when it's there. Torrey makes a move inside the 15, stays on his feet inside the 10. Andre Torrey with a run to the eight yard line. First and goal for North Texas after Torrey takes it inside the 10. Yeah, it's a nice job there. Jacob Brammer, 56, the right tackle. He maintains his block long enough so Deontay Torrey can cut out the backside and the defense gets wrong and then you saw a big gash there again. 17 yard run for Torrey. He'll take the handoff again. Inside the five, down to the two yard line. Six yard run for Torrey and now second and goal for the Mean Green. Here's where you like for these big guys up front to just get nasty because sometimes you just got to do it. It's not about finesse. It's not about the pretty yards. It's about beating the guy across from you. And it seems like, again, they are reestablishing control of the line of scrimmage here. Nick Smith checks into the game. Senior running back out of Fort Worth. Looks for the end zone, but stopped just shy inside the one yard line. Nick Smith with his first carry of the day. <laughs> He's a senior who's meant a lot to this program, and I think this is Seth Luttrell trying to give a nod to him. He's been a, a reliable player for North Texas, but DeAndre Torrey and now Oscar Attaway have come in to kind of take the lion's share of the carries. It will be Torrey here, and Torrey buries his head into the Offensive line, and he comes away with a touchdown. DeAndre Torrey, yard run, touchdown, Mean Green. Well, we, we, we said they had to cap it off here. He had to get seven on the board to just kind of put this thing in control. And it's quite fitting that DeAndre Torrey, 17 carries prior to that one for 98 yards, and now you tack on another carry and a, and a touchdown. To cap it off, I think it's pretty fitting as well. Extra point good. is good. And North Texas with a 17 point lead. DeAndre Torrey with the touchdown to make it 27 to 10. Rice game was a a couple of years ago here at Apogee Stadium and a junior college transfer by the name of DeAndre Torrey broke out with a three touchdown game, 15 carries for 130 yards and Torrey today against the Rice Owls having another big day as he has 19 carries for 99 yards and a touchdown. I really like the way he runs the ball. It was tough that first half. He was only getting one or two, maybe even three yards of pop, but they stuck to it. I'm so impressed with the coaching staff for keeping the mindset of their identity, and DeAndre Torrey certainly benefit from it. And he got a chance for three running backs here to almost get 100 yards uh, again. Yeah, their last game against Middle Tennessee, North Texas, for the first time in school history, had three rushers go over 100 yards. They've got a chance today with DeAndre Torrey at 99, Jason Bean at 94, Oscar Attaway has 72 yards. Collins crossing, ball comes loose. And the pass to Andrew Mason as he coughs it up and he was already down the official's rule at the 25 yard line. And, and typically crossing routes against most defenses would have a ton of success. And although that was a four yard gain, the speed of the defense and KD Davis can shut that down to keep it just as that. They catch the ball and they immediately go down. Second down and six. Collins 
Throws it again over the middle this time, intended for Jake Bailey, and he makes the grab up at the 42-yard line, good for a first down, 16 yards. That's a great throw by Matt Collins. I mean, he, he had to throw that ball just a little bit behind because you don't want to lead your receiver into a blow-up shot. And he pinned that ball in the left shoulder pad of his receiver there. Still some time for Rice, but they have a lot of work to do. Collins, with time, pulls it down. Uh-oh. Spins and spins right into Dion Noville. That is not the guy you want to run into. Oh, no, sir. At the 45-yard line, pick up a three, but Collins is going to feel that one. And especially if you've got the big man, he's been double teamed, but look at him stay on it. And he's already tired, but he needs to get a reward. And there it was to put a pounce and a hit on the quarterback. Like running into a Mack truck. Oh, man. <laughs> Collins, quick toss. This one to Myers, and Myers with an extra effort picks up the first down. Clock continuing to roll now, though. 5.15 remaining in the game. Myers has quietly had a nice game. Had five catches before that one for 50 yards. He's playing the tight end, but I think he's more of a Kind of a Swiss Army knife of a H-back slash tight end slash inside receiver. Collins throws it, ball tipped up in the air, falls incomplete. It was intended for Jake Bailey. North Texas almost able to pick it off with Quinn Whitlock there in coverage. Yeah, good coverage again. His defenses, these defensive backs have re uh, really stepped up and met the challenge. And Hey, these kids have social media. These kids read the, the press clippings. They know the defense has been really under, you know, scrutinized, if you will. It's been the one weak spot on this team. But they have come out here and played a great performance and really shut these receivers down the second half on. Collins complete to Myers. That one up near the first down marker. It's a game of nine. To be a yard shy of the first down. So third and one coming up for Rice. If they've got any chance, they got to get this first down. And uh, really not even to even think about it. If they don't happen to get it, got to go for it on fourth down. So you, you almost like to see them get a little bit quicker, <laughs> a little bit uh, a little bit of a tempo here. They, they're still huddling up, and a lot of time has just ran off the clock now. And off to Griffin. And Griffin will pick up the first down. Down to the 31 yard line, game six. Alex Morris made the stop on the play, but the time just starting to dwindle away for the Rice Owls. Under four minutes to play in the game. Collins throws near sideline and again almost picked off. This time John Davis had a chance at it. You're seeing all these young players, and John Davis, certainly one of those, a red shirt freshman, growing up literally as the game has progressed today. And they've had to. They've had guys that have to come in and step up. Once again, meeting the challenge. Rice down by 17. Here comes the rush. Dumps off underneath the Griffin, incomplete. And Collins took a shot after he delivered the football. Take a look at this. Yeah, trying to run the screen pay, play to Griffin. Well, I say he took a shot. That looked more like he tried to sell. Yeah, he tried to flop, didn't <laughs> he? He tried to sell a penalty. <laughs> it didn't really work. Tried to flop. And, and play had a chance, too, because they were actually outflanked the defense on that screen pass. Keep your mind on Jordan Myers. Jordan Myers has been the go-to target. Number seven, he's in the slot, just outside the left tackle. Collins in trouble, and Collins goes down. And one of the twins, Grayson Murphy, with the sack. 
on third down to push Rice even out of field goal range here at fourth and 23. Uh, it's just man-to-man -man blocking. Beautiful swim inside technique. Grayson Murphy, that is, that is textbook field technique. Three. And Gabriel Murphy from the other side was being held like crazy, <laughs> but no penalty flag called on the play. Third sack of the afternoon. Mean Green just continuing to get back into the backfield. Fourth and 23 now. Three thirteen remaining in the ball game. Now did, his, did his brother get hurt on the celebration? Gabriel Murphy limping a bit as he walks off the field. <laughs> oh man, he's he's been digged up up and down in the game. Look at that swimmer. They they just need to clip that and cut that shot and send that across the country to all these high school players. That is how you do a swim technique if you're playing defensive end. And it also helps to have your brother on the field at the same time, too. You can have an identical celebration. These athletic defensive ends, they, they're not overly huge. You know, Devontae McCray, 6'4", 256. When we talked about the Murphy brothers, what they are, you know. The biggest guy on the line is obviously Deion Neville. Yeah, when you've got a guy like Neville who's 315, that averages it out for you a little bit, I guess. <laughs> so on fourth and 23, Rice has to go for it down by 17. Toss incomplete. Andrew Mason looked like they might be trying to set up a hook and lateral there, yeah. but uh, Mason couldn't make the first part of that, the catch. And the ball goes over on downs to North Texas with under three minutes remaining in the game and they lead by 17. Texas leads by 17, and a big reason for their success today, the play of Jalen Darden, but let's not count out Austin Trammell either as you look at those numbers, LD. Uh, DeAndre Torrey with a three-yard run DeAndre to start Torrey this drive on first carry. down. Trammell had a big day this afternoon for the Owls uh, to go right <laughs> along with whatever Jalen Darden was doing. He, he scored the only touchdown for the Rice Owls, and Although he didn't get the results in terms of winning this game, make no mistake about it, he is one of the top receivers in Conference USA. And both receivers today show you glimpses of why they're one and two, respectively, in Conference USA receiving yards. North Texas has given Jason Bean the rest of the day off. They go to Austin Oni, the oldest quarterback in the FBS, 27 years old. Spent six years in the New York Yankees organization after a stellar high school career just down the road in Argyle, Texas. Oni's handoff up to the 49-yard line. Well, Austin Oni leads Conference USA in passing yards per game through five games. <laughs> so this is, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's a drop off or anything like that. You're basically putting another starting quarterback in behind Jason Bean. And Nick Smith in the backfield to get some carries here on senior day. Oni will keep it, goes right. Tackle at the 49-yard line. Well, at the beginning of the year, it was a competition between Austin Oni and Jason Bean. Timeout Seth Luttrell gave both quarterbacks ample opportunity to show what they could do. Oni has played in every game this year. Jason Bean has not. Oni had the full ride through a couple of those games this season. But when this team really needed an offensive spark against Middle Tennessee, it was Jason Bean who came in and really lit the offense on fire. And I would say at this point, given his performance against Middle Tennessee and today, that this is Jason Bean's football team now. I agree. I completely agree. And even back way when with Houston Baptist is in town, Jason Bean, to me, passed the eyeball test. And the eyeball test today, the intangibles, he's not always going to be on with his passes. He may not have success running the ball. I just think they just look for him a calming force. He looks to be in command. His poise back there in the pocket. 
And I, I just think he just gives this team the spark you mentioned, Doug, and I think they're going to certainly benefit from that going forward. The kick by Rodriguez taken by Trammell. Trammell heading to the near side across the 30-yard line, picks up a block, and this is Bailey actually, Jake Bailey down the near sideline. He will Jake take Bailey. it to the end zone, but there With are penalty flags, flags all over the place. So this one may be coming back for the Rice Owls. I, I just don't agree with this play. I, I mean, the, the flag, they it's almost taking it out of football. Personal foul. foul. Illegal blindside block, return team, number 32. 15-yard penalty from the end, excuse me, from the spot of the foul, first down. I mean, what is the guy supposed to do? He's basically turning his back into the, to the defender to make the block, but it's a legal blindside block in today's game. I, I just don't agree with the way football is going this direction. Look at this here. You're going to see it at the top, and I know they're trying to protect the players, but this is a violent sport to begin with right there. Right? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. And, I'm, I mean, I'm certainly not in a position to make any rule changes in NCAA football, but that, to me, is just a play that happens in the course of a football game. It is a physical sport. There is contact between two teams. And it, it wasn't a blind side in the sense that it was a cheap shot or anything like that. It was just contact between two opposing forces coming together. Full speed, yeah. right? And you can even see him. He throws his hands up. It kind of turns sideways, knowing that, hey, I might even get called on this as the rule. He's protecting himself. And unfortunately, with the speed of the game and the violent nature of it, I mean, I, I just don't know if that's necessarily a flag we need to start calling it. So bring the return back, Rice. Sets up offensively, and Bailey with the reception up to the 31-yard line, first down for the Owls. Jake Bailey's been a nice compliment to Austin Trammell today in that receiving core, along with Jordan Miles. Gabriel Murphy going off again. Here's Griffin catching it, turning it upfield, and Griffin stays in bounds all the way across the 30-yard line. Out of bounds at the 28. Hey, here's the play they wanted to do a little bit earlier, get the screenplay out to Griffin. This time they get the connection right, and you see Griffin, not a blazer, but he's fast enough and was able to get a huge gain to move the chains downfield. This Owls team played without their leading rusher, Juma Toviano today. Got injured in practice this week and was unable to go for the Owls this afternoon. That played a factor. It allowed Griffin the opportunity to step up, but at the same time, you're missing one of your key playmakers. Yeah, yeah and it was a game time decision. It looked like he was out in warm ups, but you know, he's a starter for the reason. And yeah, I think that's some adjustment that they had to make. And I, I thought at times Griffin did a great job and it looked like they were going to be physical. It looks like they were going to run the ISO. They had some success, but credit North Texas to make the adjustment. And then this offense got one dimensional and that's what got him behind. Griffin, the leading rusher for Rice, 20 carries for 72 yards. DeAndre Torrey with a 19 carry, 102 yard day for North Texas. Myers underneath, makes the grab, about a five yard gain. Jordan Myers, one of the few seniors in the receiving core, along with Austin Trammell. Jake Bailey, Jack Bradley, Austin Conrad, and Mason, all of them underclassmen, as Collins will run out of bounds after a first down to stop the clock with 18 seconds left. North Texas set to improve to three and three. Their conference record will be two and two after today. Rice falling to one and two, and one and two in conference play. Still a wide open race to the finish in the conference. And as much as anything, LD, it's a battle of attrition to see who can stay healthy. Boy. <laughs> who, can, who can avoid the COVID the and who can keep a team on the field? 
Last play under review. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What is the review going to do? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, man. So close to the finish line yet so far. Been a pretty quick ball game, though. Yeah, it's been, you in know, the grand I, scheme of things. I, I think, you know, when these two teams are layoff, you, you just never know with these teenagers, right? You just never know if the game is going to be sharp, if they're going to come out and play. I think they played well. I guess this is what we're looking at as far as the replay. I mean, you could give it to them. And <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure Seth was the outcome of the say, game. whatever it is, go ahead. <laughs> Take give it. it to them. We mentioned next up for North Texas, UTSA is on the schedule next week. Next up for Rice, they will host UTEP. So battle with the Owls and the Miners coming up in Conference USA. Had a chance to see the Miners last week and that's a spirited bunch and always makes for an entertaining matchup between the Owls and the, uh, the Miners. Certainly had to see a chance at UTSA last week too. So North Texas is gonna have their hands full because UTSA's defense certainly been better. And the way that Frank Harris is progressing as a quarterback for the Roadrunners, the way he can run the ball and throw is gonna put a lot of pressure against his defense. After review, they're gonna have to adjust the runner stepped out at the 17 and a half yard line, first down. Great. <laughs> That's what we thought it was anyway. First down for the Rice Owls. 18 seconds left to go in the game. Collins hit as he throws it. It sails out of bounds. And North Texas, the defense continuing to play hard to the very finish. Yeah, they sent an all out blitz and sending the message of, hey, we're not gonna go let you just kind of get some cheap yardage here at the end of the game. Want to throw to the end zone where we're going to release the hounds and try to get back there and meet you at the quarterback. Here they come again. Collins delivers to the end zone, caught by Bailey. Touchdown for the Rice Sounds with eight seconds left to go in the game. It's a pretty throw. Jake Bailey with his second touchdown reception of the year. And it makes the score 27 to 16. Interesting note, and not to take anything away from what we just saw here with Collins connecting with Bailey for the touchdown, but two touchdown passes today for Rice. They will have played three full games after today, and they do not have a rushing touchdown on the year. How many times have you ever been in a team to say that about, right? I mean, that's, that's just unheard of. But the quarterback through three games has got 10 touchdown passes, so I guess it balances out in the in the run, but uh, they're going to come up short on the scoreboard, and that's where it counts the most. Cuts the lead to 10, 27 to 17, but only eight seconds left to go in the game. North Texas and Rice meeting for the 11th time in their history today here at Apogee Stadium, and coming into the game, the series was tied at five wins apiece. So a victory today for North Texas would give them the series lead at six to five. It would also make head coach Seth Luttrell four and one against the Rice Owls in his coaching career here at UNT. It's just hard to believe he's already been here as long as he has and quietly doing a great job of winning some of these in-state matchups. And now he's favorable certainly by quite a bit against these Rice Owls here. See if. The Owls attempt the onside kick here. Why not? With eight seconds left to go. They will not. They will kick it high and deep. DeAndre Torrey with the fair catch. So the Mean Green can just take a knee in victory formation here and come away with a victory in front of the home crowd. For the first time since October 17th that they've taken the football field. As we mentioned earlier, they looked a little rusty at the beginning, but they certainly got their wheels on and got on track about the second quarter and uh, have not looked back since. Yeah, it was a great job of these coaches sticking with the game plan and really making the in-game adjustments 
and then these players getting the confidence, especially on the defensive side of the ball, and the offense did what they had to do. It wasn't a typical performance by the offense, but they still had the, the big explosive plays, and you had some nice running there by the running backs as well. Austin Arnie will take the knee, and Seth Luttrell head across field to shake hands with Mike Blumgren, and fist bump with Mike Blumgren, as the case may be. As the final score will go down, North Texas 27 and the Rice Isles 17. Mike Collins with a big day, 327 yards, two touchdowns, but not enough as the North Texas Mean Green win in 27 17. So for Ladaren McLean, I'm Doug Anderson saying so long from Denton, Texas. The final score, North Texas 27-17 over the Rice Owls. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.